M11 by one and a half. So I'm not really sure how you end up uh, ABS unit that's tapped differently. Got a couple quarts that are real good stuff here. Wouldn't you know we ended up having to break out every trick in the book. Turns out it is a little bit combustible still. Somehow there's no right answer, but there's definitely a wrong answer, which I just don't think is fair. What's up, Buck? Doug Dini in the garage. I'm out here in the chilly coldness trying to jimmy jam some new brake lines in this WJ here. Y'all saw the video where we ran the back brake line. Uh, we take her out for the test drive. Everything feels good. And wouldn't you know, the fronts give up the ghost right there in the driveway uh, as we're coming back from the test drive. So now we got to do the fronts. The reason is uh, my dad needs to borrow a vehicle. He, uh, he got sideswiped, got hit and run by a jacked up F-250. Somebody sideswiped his uh, Subaru and then spun off on him. Uh, he's he's fine, but the Subaru's a little worse for the wear. So dad's gonna be taking the uh, y'all tuned up red 47, which means I get to take old Willie here to work. But you know, brakes are uh, they're one of those uh, comforts that I like to have. I'm weird that way. Uh, I like to have you know brakes all around when driving the child to daycare. So anyway, point is, this was going to be a solo mission. That's why I'm doing it in the dark. <clears throat> Didn't expect to bring you folks in for the show at all. Weirdest things happen. I've worked on WJs. I've worked on more WJs than I can imagine. And I've known it to be fact that the rear, first of all, you all know the obnoxious thing about WJ brake lines is that the uh, there's there's three sixteenths with three eighths hardware, except there's a bubble flare, a metric bubble flare up on the ABS unit. For the rear, it's a metric M12 by, I don't remember what. Uh, and then for the fronts, it's M11 by one and a half. That's what they all are. They all are M11 by one and a half, at least all the ones I've ever worked on. So I went out and I bought two M11, can you see this at all, by one and a half. That's this guy right here. I put one in the uh, driver's side, fits just fine. I go to put it in the passenger side, she's a no-go. Wouldn't fit, too big. So I go back to the parts store. Wouldn't you know, this WJ took an M10 by one. You can see the difference there. I got this magical hat from my wife. She gave me for Christmas. Wherever I look, there's light. It's pretty freaking awesome, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, so you can see, here's your M11 by one and a half that every WJ I've ever worked on, both of them was that. And then this guy right here is your M10 by one. Uh, so I'm not really sure how you end up with a uh, ABS unit that's tapped differently. Maybe some years, maybe they did this. This is a 2000. Maybe they straightened that out. I can't remember what years I've done this in. But anyway, we've got those bad boys Jimmy jammed in. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, they uh, these brake lines fought me. I thought it was gonna be a five minute job taking them out last night. But wouldn't you know we ended up having to break out every trick in the book. We went in with the line wrenches as one would. That didn't do it. So we gave her a couple snorts of the good stuff. Still no love. So we. Uh, Gave her the old heat miser treatment, tried to burn her down. Uh, that was getting close, so we got her hot again, and then we blasted her with the PB to shock it into doing what we wanted. We snipped off the old line, we got on there with the old six point. And honestly, every time I do brake lines, this is what it comes to. I don't know why I don't just start with a little bit of heat, a little bit of the feet, a little bit of the snippy snippy, and a good six point. I'll get the job done every time. Anyway, so we got all that stuff taken care of. Oh, we've got our new brake lines in here. Uh, as I've said in previous videos, I find it worth the small amount of extra money to just go ahead and buy the pre-cut lens, uh, get the union for stuff you gotta connect together, and then of course, you can see, got a couple quarts that are real good stuff here. Uh, I don't think Willie, this Jeep, has had an oil change since Obama was in office. Now granted, I haven't put too many miles on him, but I think that oil's definitely aged out. So we're gonna get these brake lines put in tonight. Tomorrow the missus will likely help me with the uh, the bleeding of the brakes. And then we'll get a little bit of Tella in there. Whatever, let's stop talking, let's start working. I'm gonna throw these lines in and hope there's not 1,400 feet of extra line that I gotta coil up somewhere. There will be, because I did the right thing and just estimated. That's when I just as easily could have laid these out and measured them, but you don't need to measure. So we got these bad boys all jimmy jammed down in there. This one, the uh, M10 turned out to be a 13. The M11 is a 14 to crank on down. I uh, reevaluated my life choices in buying this line and there's just way too much, which is exactly enough. So we're gonna go ahead and put a nice gentle bend bend in this bad boy so that we can sneak her into her spot and then slip her on down. I think there's gonna be some curly cues in our future here. Maybe we'll even add a little bit of a 
a sideways gentle bend. Oh yeah, come on now, let's go. This nickel whatever plated whoozy what's it is, this stuff is magical. If you've ever been unlucky enough to work with stainless steel, this stuff, I mean it just, it glides. It's like butter, as Eric would say. Eric does say that. Like butter. He also says done like dinner, which I don't know what that means, but I laugh every time he says it. Done like dinner. Give this guy just the gentlest of snuggings down. Yeah, man, so initially dad asked, he's like, oh, I'll just, I'll just borrow your, uh, your lifted Jeeps, no problem. I said, dad, I can't do that to you. <laughs> My dad's 70 years old. I just can't see him rolling down the road in Willie, dodging death wobble and trying to figure out what that noise is. So I'll take Willie. He and I haven't had some time to spend together in a while anyway. All right, I'm gonna go deep sea diving. Yep, get in the diving bell and go connect that down bottom, see how many loop de we gotta put in her. Alrighty, Buck. Well, first side went in, Whew. easy as could be. Couldn't ask for better. Uh, even though I thought I had more than I needed, we actually had just enough to go down, turn down for what, and right into the hole. Perfect, mint, wonderful. This guy right here is uh, what I planned to use for the other side. It's a five, foot piece of 3 16 with the necessary inverted flare. Nope. What's that look like to you? Looks like a bubble flare to me, though apparently when I was at the auto parts store today, it looked like an inverted flare, i.e. what the frig I need for my WJ. So, yet another roadblock. I've already been to the parts store four or five times, uh, three different parts stores four or five times, trying to figure this project out. And it looks like I get to go at least once more. That's the bad news. The good news is the wife mixed up a batch of rum chata eggnog tonight. Uh, so I guess I'm just gonna go finish, well not finish, I'm just gonna put my tools away and then go drown my sorrows in that. And perhaps tomorrow we can get to the parts store and get the right fitting. Yeah. I mean, it's an easy mistake. This one's red, the other one's gold. Easy mistake to make in a well-lit store, right? My God, it's freaking amateur hour. Howdy hosers there friends, it is the next day. We went ahead and got the correct line. We're making our precision bends now. Make sure we're gonna clear everything in the engine bay here. Okay, uh, I might even, no, I'm not gonna put it. Yeah, screw it, we'll put it back in the uh, clip. Make a nice little factory look. Get this all jimmy jammed in there. Okay, I'm not trying to make this a longer project than it needs to. Uh, though it's already taken three days, so it's already a longer project than it needs to. Yeah, why not? We'll put it back in the connectors. Look at that. Uncle Jerry approved. And six foot was perfect. Got the six foot line. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Jimmy Jammer right down in there. Uh-huh. And pull out the old three eights. Oh, that feels cross-threaded. <clears throat> I think what we're gonna do now, since it's clearly raining and kind of cold, and there's football on and I wanted to get the smoker running today, we're gonna smoke some cheese, yeah. Smoke some cheddar, smoke some uh, mozzarella. Smoked mozzarella is great, man, I tell you. Can't get enough of this stuff. Let's see, make sure we're not touching anything we ought not. <clears throat> Obviously we're good over there. There's not much on this side of the engine that it could touch. Is it out of the way of the control arm? Sure is. Not on the exhaust, not touching anything else. It's even in the connectors. I mean, it almost takes all the fun out of it doing it so correctly. All right, he wants to take bets on whether or not this bleeder valve is gonna pop out or if we're gonna have to, oh yeah, it's gonna require some persuasion. I'll get uh, Mr. Heat Miser. Alrighty, first and foremost, safety swints engaged. You know, for fashion. We're gonna give her a little bit of the heat miser bottle. We're gonna give her a couple spritzes of the good stuff to shock it. We're gonna get the good old six point on there, and then we're gonna be victorious. We shall not deviate from that plan. Let's just try. Yeah, no, that's not coming. Alrighty. Spark up. Oh, that's a new one. Ow. My hands are cold.
here's what we're gonna do. I really don't feel like melting our ABS or soft lines. That should do it. I know it's wood, but it's a little bit wet from the rain, so it's not flammable anymore, right? Contact. Turns out it is a little bit combustible still. Come on. <coughs> Delightful. <clears throat> Alrighty. Let's see if that comedy of errors got us where we're going. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. I knew she'd come around. Nobody can reject me when I put on my heat miser charm. All right, good. That one was the only question because the other side is a new caliper. So we're gonna use this ridiculous method where you got a hose into a jug and you jimmy jam it on there and apparently it bleeds the air out allegedly. I don't know, we're gonna find out. First things first, open. This, oh, there was a little pressure in there. It was bubbling out a bit. Go find your hose clamp that you sent flying. Check. Reattach the hose. The long time and astute viewers will recognize this particular line. I used it when we did the uh, how to use propane to find vacuum leaks video. It's a multi-purpose hose right there. Nothing's better than having some good quality hose around. Nothing better than having some good quality hose around and some good quality rope, am I right? What are you gonna need rope for? They always have it in the movies and it's dead useful. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Okay, now we just give the brakes the old pumpy pumpy. And allegedly, all the bubbles come out. Now ideally, we would have done this with a um, uh, clear hose so we could see what the heck was going on. But we are monkeys with toolboxes, not accredited universities. Oh yeah, I can see though. Fluid's coming through. Pedal's getting kind of hard. Oh man, we just might have brakes in this Jeep. Now, I don't know where my closed end or open end wrench is. We got these line wrenches, so we're gonna have to Pull this off and then oh, super quickly turn that in. Use the right side of the wrench. Bingo! Good enough for government work, I tell ya. Alrighty, brakes are bled. I don't feel like rolling underneath the Jeep right now in the rain to do the oil change. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cut that in in a second. You guys wanna see, you wanna see the cold smoke setup? It's got nothing to do with Jeeps, automotive, Chevy trucks, anything. Uh, my other passion outside of working on dirty, rusty old pieces of garbage is smoking up some dank meats in the smoker. I think, I think you're gonna wanna see my cold smoke setup. It's Uncle Jerry approved. Alrighty friends, what you are looking at is the most custom of custom cold smoke setups. Now what we're starting with here is the barbecue smoker. This is the ugly drum smoker that I built. If you haven't seen that video, check the card up in the corner. I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, we've got it running wide open today, rolling on some apple wood. It's gonna be real nice. Now usually we're serving up the dank meats in here. We made all types of uh, uh, smoked barbecue wings, pulled pork's real good on here, tons of ribs, we made chickens. Uh, if you follow my Instagram, uh, dug in the garage and you've seen all the stuff we do here but the problem is can't really run this thing below about 120 degrees so we had uncle jerry come over and rig us up this cold smoke what we got is all of the aluminum tape all of it uh some nice uh, fda approved flex pipe hosing coming over here to an old grill looks like we're running right at about 50 degrees and inside get ready look at that 
We've got the Mott's, the Pepper Jack, and the Cheddar. I'm not going to leave it open too soon, but check out that color on that Mott's there. Oh, yeah, you can see the smoke just pours in. So I'm going to go inside, get comfy, watch a little bit of Fool's Ball, let the rain do what the rain wants to do. I guess we'll try to somewhat sort of close this hood. Ah, good enough. Oh, let's check the reservoir. Almost forgot. Uh, eh, looks like it's still in a good place. Put the cap on there. I always forget the cap. Always forget the cap. Ooh, buddy. All right, take your, place your bets now. Try to determine if there's any oil even left in the old girl. Uh, it's bad under here, man. This is like cautionary tale status. What not to do. Oh, come on. Give me the goods. Also that rear mean pour that I was talking about. Just is what it is, man. Okay. Now there's only like 10,000 miles on this oil, but it's several years old. Let's go. Come on, give me the good stuff. I'll bet it comes out like tar. Uh, I've seen worse. It still has some viscosity left, so that's positive. But she's pretty dark. Yep. Yep. That's Oreo colored oil right there, tell you what. All right, Willie. You're getting the good stuff today. Some of that Tella. Why didn't I grab a... I never grab a towel. Snug it up. I mean, it almost seems silly to, like, bother cleaning some of the oil off. <laughs> this thing needs a, a car wash ASAP. I think it needs an oil pan. Honestly, this one... She's about to give up the ghost, but we'll see if we can't jimmy jam a few more miles out of her. At some point, I'm not, I'm not kidding, at some point in the near future, Willie's... The mill's got to come out, got to pull the ranch out, clean it up, maybe address some of the rot before it just disappears into Mother Earth Gaia. Let's go up top, get that felter. Oh my goodness, my starter. <laughs> Starter's drenched in oil. What could go wrong? Ignore it. Moving on. Alrighty, I recognize the sun is in your eyes, but we got a job to do. We're going to attempt to get this off with our big man bear pig paws here. If not, we'll call in the, uh, the ringer. <clears throat> Come on now. Ah. This thing probably rust welded right on there. Now I'm a tiny dude, only about 5'4", but that comes in handy, man. I can get in there with the engine and really apply some leverage. Oh, but it's not gonna do it this time. Where's my buddy? My little helping hands. Never fails, get that on there. Oh yeah, this guy was. He had become one with the block and is not wanting to. Come on. There it is. Yep. And I forgot to move the bucket, so I guess we'll just add a little more tie dye to the driveway. That's fine. Quality effort. A little more oil on the starter. Perfect. Yep. And there we go. I am victorious. Where's the new one? I didn't bring the new one. Ah, oh, where is it? I'm already in the engine bay. <clears throat> now I find you can usually just use the oil on your dirty old paw there, or what's left around the ring here to lube this guy up. I don't fill my oil filters before I put them on there. Uh, I don't have any reason that I've worked out over years and years of experience. I'm just lazy. Never had a problem. All right, there we go. I'll tell you what we are gonna do though. We're gonna add a little Lucas on top. I think the old girl's earned it. What's going on here? Thread on your freaking thing. There we go. Spinny, spinny. I do use only Mopar filters though. And again, never had a problem. Uh-oh. Oh no, we broke the cardinal rule. What am I always squawking about? You always remove the fill before you empty it so that if there's a problem, you're not just left empty. <whistles> Got lucky there. There's like water up there. What the heck's going on here? It's like water on the valve car. I had to leave the engine thing kind of open because I was charging the battery and then it got a surprise downpour. I tell you, amateur hour. 
get a funnel and get this thing furled. I use my garage for two things, two hobbies. One is automotive and the other is woodworking. I tell you man, automotive and woodworking do not belong in the same shop. My funnels are always full of friggin' uh, sawdust and my lumber always has grease and oil marks on it. I need two separate shops. Instead I have half of a tiny garage. That's okay. Wow, this is like super sticky sawdust. What was I cutting? AVE would be disgusted right now with all these dead tree carcasses. Ugh. Carbohydrate foam, as he would say. <laughs> is it clean enough? No. Is it clean enough for me? Yeah. Plop her on in. Oh, yep. Yeah. Jam it up against there. Now we went with the Tela T4. 1030 and everybody always asks me why don't you go with t6 it's got more whatever it's better 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 I can never find it man and it's always more expensive they either want me to buy five gallons of it or you can get it in this weird 3.78 liter thing so the t4 is what we found you can get that right in there go and get that right in there uh oh we almost spilled So pretty, fresh oil. Come on. It's pretty chilly out here. Probably should have had this oil in the house. It's okay. One. Now there's another thing about these four liters that people have said, and I think I agree with, they call for six quarts of oil. But a lot of people have suggested that six quarts is just a little bit too much. And that's why they blow out the rear mains the way they do. I don't know for a fact either way, but I usually run my four liters on just under six. So this is gonna come out that weird 3.75 liter, and then two of these one liters is gonna give me five and three quarter liters. So I don't know much about math, but I think that'll be all right. And I checked the dipsticks, not like it's low or anything, but I've heard a bunch of people suggest Run your four liter just slightly low. But then you gotta keep an eye on it because these stupid things leak so much. I don't know, man. There's no right answer. Somehow there's no right answer, but there's definitely a wrong answer, which I just don't think is fair. Yeah, this oil's real cold. Oh well. Probably have no chance of getting that Lucas to come out of the bottle. I'm gonna try anyway, because old Willie deserves it. That's the other thing. I usually add Lucas to the four liter as well, so I'm probably making up that other 0.75 anyway. Two, three. We got the Rucus. The bottle of Rucus is pretty sticky. I can deal with a lot of things in this world. I cannot deal with sticky. I hate it. Oh yeah, that stuff's honey. Just a bit. Oh, that's way too much, which is exactly enough. Quality effort. Look at the treatment of this four liter, I tell ya. I'm spoiling you, Willie. I'm spoiling you. Let's let that drip a minute. Drip, drop. Rain drop, drop top. When it's two degrees out, my engine knocks. All right, we're gonna call that good enough for government work. Oh yeah, we got the sticky ickies. The sticky ickies, the leaning tower of Chisa. There it is. We're done. Let's start this hewer up. That's right, Willie, burn it all out. Get that bad, ilky stuff out of you. That's okay. Alrighty friends, that is all there is to it for a video that was never meant to be, never meant to make a YouTube video on this thing, but as things always tend to when you're a monkey with a toolbox, things got out of hand and I figured I'd bring you guys in for the hilarity. Now I went ahead and be uh, bled out the back brakes because I never got a chance to finish bleeding them before when the fronts blew out on me. We had to give them the same heat miser, spritz of the good stuff uh, treatment to get the bleeders un stuckified but we were victorious. Willie decided to cooperate 
His reward will be oh, some fresh gas, a week of commuting to work, and maybe even the $12 super extra special double secret probation uh, car wash, the one what gets the under bits. Um, I think he's earned that. So we're gonna sign off here. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Please consider checking us out on Patreon, Etsy, and Teespring, as this will be the first video, I guess, of 2020. In fact, I might even put it out on New Year's Day, so y'all got something to look at while you're ignoring your family. Uh, Happy New Year, you filthy animals. Uh, thanks for all your support in 2019. 2020 is gonna be good, man. More rust, more dust, more mud, blood, and beer. 2020 is gonna be our year. More cruddy projects on the driveway. We actually already have another DOA vehicle that you guys haven't even seen yet. We got another DOA we bought. Total, dead on arrival, no start, no nothing. You're gonna like this one, though. So I'm gonna get this wheel on, because it does look like the sky's about to open up on me. I wanna get inside and do some other stuff, enjoy some of that smoked cheese. We're, we're a few days in now. Uh, the smoked cheese came out so good, man. You put a little bit of, uh, you put a piece of, of um, pepperoni then you put some Dave's uh, Dave's insanity sauce but the habanero one a little dab of that and then some of the smoked cheese on top I tell you what all right I've gabbed enough so always thanks for watching see you next time